Hey everybody, what's going on? This is me, Alex, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys the best export settings for Adobe Premiere Pro CS6, so let's go right ahead and get started. Adobe Premiere Pro CS6 is a professional video editor that almost everybody knows of, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started now. I've been using Adobe Premiere Pro CS6 for a little while now uh, to edit my videos. I transition between Final Cut Pro and CS6 a lot because of the effects, but I uh, stick to CS6 because I just think it has a little bit more uh, effects to it uh, than Final Cut Pro 10. So, uh, once we have done this you're going to want to create a new project uh, if you have not already done this and then you want to go ahead and go to make sure display format is going to be on frames now the reason i chose frames is because frames uh it's easier for me to understand than time code because frames i work by frames um and then the display more fat the, the display more format you want audio samples and the capture format if you're capturing in hd 720p i definitely recommend you choose the hdv uh, or else it will lower the quality down to the standard definition if you're capturing in 480p then uh, you want to choose did uh, dv uh, not hdv or else it will stretch your video out then the next thing you can choose your location here and then you want to name it i'm just going to name this one test video uh because of the time uh, we're gonna go ahead and click on OK and our project it's gonna bring up the new sequence window the sequence you want to select here now uh, again if you're shooting in 480p you're gonna want to select standard definition or standard 48 kilohertz the reason is because this is a uh, programmed for the four uh, third resolution instead of the 16.9 resolution uh, that's widescreen 16.9 the uh, not widescreen of standard is 4.3 so we're gonna shoot we're, we're shooting this is in a 1080p uh, 1080p video but we're gonna go put it down to 720p so um, we're gonna go ahead and select the widescreen 48 kilohertz that's the one you want to check and then you can name whatever you want your sequence um, once Adobe Premiere Pro opens up like this we're gonna want to go and import our file and uh, what that's gonna do you want to go to import here and that's going to go ahead and import the file now we're going to want to check and import i'm just going to import mp4 file right here and just import that out of uh, my camcorder all right once we have opened that up right here we're going to go ahead and choose the file so we're going to go ahead and drag that to our timeline and then once that is brought to our timeline we have the option to go ahead and play it if we want to and then do all that uh, while we're there as well as just to play the video and quickly showing you guys uh this video all right, uh, once you've done that, you want to go ahead and I'm just going to export this right out of the box. So I'm going to go into file and we're going to go to export and media. All right, now once it's going to bring up the export settings, this is where you want to pay attention. All right, the export settings, you want to choose MP4 or H.264. The reason is because uh, H.264 is the YouTube uh, codec you want to render in, that way making processing much faster than QuickTime or .mov or .wmv. Now, H.264 is also a lot smaller file size, so if you're looking for one of those file size people, I definitely recommend you go with them. Now, the presets, you want to choose a preset that is is the one that you want so i already chose i already made my own it's called youtube hd but um you're gonna want to start off here you do you want to select between these few presets right here uh leave this one alone you want to go ahead and choose uh, if you're rendering in we're going to start with 720p um 29.97 frames per second so we're going to choose this one right here and then we're going to do is we're going to go and select uh, the the export video and export audio. Make sure those are checked. Then once we're in video, you want to make sure the width and height say 7, 8, uh, the width says 1280 by 1280 and the width and the height says 720. The next thing you want to see is the frame rate. Now the frame rate, you want to make sure it says 29.97. Uh, you can check it right here. You could bump it up to 60 or 59.94 if you're recording on HDPVR or in Elgato because that's what that records in. Um, if you're in field order, you want to make sure that's progressive uh, because that will give you the maximum quality. Square pixels is 1 and the uh, TV standard is NTSC if you're in the USA, Japan. If you're in Europe and uh, Asia, uh, use the PAL uh, version. Profile, you want to make sure that is checked to uh, the high profile right here. Make sure that is checked right over there. Uh, the level, you want to make sure that's checked to 5.1. The 5.1 will give you the maximum quality. Looking at the level right here, 5.1, you want to go to 1 and it's going to not even give you the best quality. It's going to be a blurry. 5.1 will give you the best possible quality out of the file itself. However, it will bump up the file size to a mere file size. Um, you want to pay attention to that right there, but frame rate, we're just going to stick with 
right over there as well as the width and height again I mentioned before 1280 because this might change so just 720 it's gonna interlock it right in there 29.97 make sure that is changed to 29.97 uh, square pixels one profile high level 5.1 will give you the possible maximum quality out of here uh, the render at maximum depth could be improved but however the encoding will take a lot longer the VBR you can leave that at two pass if you're looking for a, a best quality but you can leave it at one pass because uh, that will however decrease the encoding time now I prefer to change this target bit rate uh, to change it to about 18 I like to keep it about 18 but the higher you keep it at um, but, but the higher you keep it at, of course, the longer the encoding should take. So we can go ahead and try to bump this up to 18 and see what that will do. And again, that will increase the, the uh, uh, file size by a large amount. Again, the more you grade it up to maximum 300, it's going to be 2 gigabytes for a 2-minute file. That's just crazy. But we're going to leave ours at around, I like to leave mine uh, around 10, possible 10 maybe, uh, or... 10 is probably what I like to leave it at max and then the audio uh, you want to make sure that is to AAC uh, AAC version uh, just a regular and then 48 Hertz over here as well as the stereo audio quality is high or highest or there is no highest but the bitrate you want to keep it above 192 you can choose between 256 is good uh, but 320 is sort of overkill so I choose just 192 and the multiplexer you can leave that alone but the video that's what you want to have it in here again as I showed you before now I like to change this to 10 sorry about that that does matter and then leave this alone just copy those settings down save your preset now you want to save this preset I'm just going to go save this as YouTube HD and we're going to go and click on OK and the preset we can just overwrite that preset we're going to go ahead and export this video, and I will be right back. All you do is just hit the export video, and that has been me teaching you guys the best Adobe Premiere Pro CS6 settings. If you guys like that video, please make sure to use the like button to your advantage, and subscribe to my channel if you guys already have not done that, to keep in latest and greatest tech of HDLX films. Bye, guys. See you on my next one. Peace.